Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the federal appeal going on in Brooklyn, New York, and the Chicago trial, pre-trial hearings and motions that's coming up right now. So as of August the 3rd, there was a motion filed in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division. United States of America versus Robert Sylvester Kelly, AKA R. Kelly, Daryl McDavid, and Milton Brown, AKA June Brown. So we have rulings on motions in limine. We're gonna go over that tonight. USA motion number one. The motion to protect the identities of certain victim witnesses so the government requests that the victim witnesses and minor one's mother be permitted to use pseudonyms during testimony. The government requests that any reference to the victim witness on minor one's mother or minor one's mother in open court be by pseudonym or first name only. The government requests that no one disclose the addresses, full names of family members, of exact place of employment of any of the victim witnesses, minor one's mother or individual D. So the defendant's response was this. R. Kelly does not object to the motion. The ruling on the motion is granted. So they're going to make sure that everything stays very limited. Now the USA motion number two, motion to preclude evidence of victims' sexual history. The government requests that any inquiry or evidence related to the victim's sexual history be excluded. Defendant's response. Kelly states that he has no intention of introducing any evidence for the purpose of sexual predisposition, but states that the victim's previous sexual behavior may be relevant to questions surrounding consensual sex acts with Kelly when the victims were not minors. So he's trying to say, let me set the stage for you and show you when things really went down. Because for him to cross-examine is going to be supportive on his defense side because he's going to show that this time happened when the victims or witnesses were not minors. And that's what we need to pay attention to here. Kelly also objects to the exclusion of evidence regarding sexual conduct of witnesses who were not victims identified in the indictment. And so Judge Lyon Weber is going to grant that motion that the sexual history be excluded. U.S. motion number three, motion to bar evidence and argument related to consent. The government requests that the court prohibit defendant from introducing evidence and arguing that the minor victims consented to engaging in sexual activity while minors. The government argues that minors lack the capacity to consent. Okay, so that's the prosecution saying that. R. Kelly is not arguing that. So they're trying to put it out there like they're saying that he's requesting that they do not bring in evidence that the minor victims consented. Defense is responding, or Kelly is saying, he doesn't intend to argue that minors are able to consent. So see how the prosecution is making the jury look as though this is something that they should raise an eyebrow to. Like, wow, he's saying that, you know, they have, be in a relationship with him? He's saying, no, it doesn't. In, he does not intend to argue that minors are able to consent. What he's arguing is that he should be allowed to cross-examine 
the minors about their conduct to negate inducement. He's trying to clear his name. He's trying to, to show how it all went down. So the ruling, the motion is granted. Um, so the government requests to prohibit defendants from introducing evidence, arguing that the minor victims consented is granted. Kelly may not argue that the minors consented to any sexual behavior with them. He wasn't trying to do that in the beginning anyway. He never was. He was just trying to say that he wants to cross-examine because they have said things on the record that obviously is not correct. And in not being correct, what is happening is all of these charges have been piled upon him on child pornography and other, you know, issues um, relating to the combination of the federal trial. And I think Ann Donnelly, Judge Donnelly has sealed information and submitted it to the Chicago courts. And I don't know if they're putting this together, which all federal all federal cases, I believe, extend and connect together. But we'll see as time moves on. USA motion number four, motion to prevent the public display of child pornography video during trial. So the government wants the court to prevent the publication of child pornography to the gallery overflow courtroom during the trial. And so the defendants respond, Kelly joins that motion. He agrees that we should not be promoting sex, child pornography. So the ruling is Lion Weber um, granted that motion. USA motion number five, motion to introduce evidence of polygraph examinations. The government seeks to introduce evidence and testimony about polygraph exams for reasons unrelated to the correctness of the result. The government argues that this evidence is probative evidence of the conspiracy charged in the indictment. So the government wants to introduce this polygraph exam. I don't know how polygraph examinations are actually held up in court to have you know, um, credibility of some sort, but we'll see how this plays out. Defendant's response. So R. Kelly is saying he does not object to the fact that polygraphs were used by Daryl McDavid. Kelly objects to the testimony about the questions and argues that the results of the polygraphs as unreliable and unduly prejudicial. And Judge Lion Weber granted the motion. So they're going to be able to talk about the polygraph examinations. And that really, I don't see how it affects R. Kelly because McD McDavid was the one who did the polygraph exams. But we'll see how that falls as the pre as the pretrial and trial moves forward. USA motion number six, notice regarding introduction of false records alleged in the superseding indictment. The government intends to admit a memo summarizing an interview of individual D to show that McDavid and Kelly conspired to obstruct justice. The government alleges that the memorandum contains false information is not and is not privileged. Defendant says, and R. Kelly objects, saying that the memorandum is not relevant evidence. Kelly also objects to the introduction of any police report that allegedly contains false statements of minor one. And again, the motion is granted. USA motion number seven, government's notice of intent to admit direct evidence of crimes charged. The government intends to introduce testimony and evidence of the physical, emotional, and sexual abuse that Kelly inflicted on minors one, three, four, five, and six. Defendant's response. Kelly objects to the introduction of any evidence that is not directly relevant to that charge. 
and any evidence that is barred by Rule 403. And the ruling, grant the motion. Defendant may raise objections during trial if they see fit. So he went on and granted it, gave the government what they wanted, but R. Kelly has actions to be able to object and bring more evidence. USA motion number eight, motion to prior notice concerning rule 608B impeachment. The government asked that the court bar all parties from introducing evidence under rule 608B, except upon prior notice outside the presence of the jury. So they don't wanna put this in front of the jury to get them confused. The government proposes that parties first notice the court, notify the court, and other parties at sidebar of his intent to impeach under the rule. Defendant's response, Brown argues that the government's request is unprecedented. Brown notes that rule 608 does not contain a notice provision. Kelly also objects to the motion. And so Judge Lyon Weber denies the motion. Motion number nine to preclude argument or evidence designed to elicit jury nullification. This motion is broken down into several subparts as seen below. USA motion number 9A, motion to preclude argument or evidence concerning potential penalties faced by defendants if they are convicted. The government asks that the court preclude defendants from introducing evidence or argument discussing the possible penalties or sentence should the defendants be convicted. Defendants have no objection. The motion is granted. Motion to preclude allegations of outrageous government conduct. The government moves to exclude evidence or argument by counsel of outrageous government conduct. Defendants have no objection. The motion is granted. Motion 9C. Motion to preclude argument and evidence regarding the, the government's motivation in investigating and prosecuting the case. The government moves to exclude any evidence or argument relating to any officers or agents motivation for investigating or prosecuting the case. Defendants have no objection, so the rule is granted. U.S. Motion 9D. Motion to preclude argument and evidence of selective prosecution theory. The government moves to exclude any evidence or argument that some witnesses who participated in the conspiracy to receive child pornography were never charged. The government also moves to exclude any evidence or argument that the par parents of the victim's witnesses should have known about the minor sexual relationship with Kelly and by saying nothing consented to the relationship. Defendant's response is Brown argues that the government's request is impermissibly broad and that evidence and argument regarding the parents of minor one are relevant. Brown argues that Kelly's relationship with minor one's parents is relevant to Brown's belief that minor one was of age or that Kelly's relationship with minor one was not sexual. The ruling, the motion is denied in part. So Brown may argue that he believed any victims were not minors. The motion is granted as to exclusion of evidence that minors or their parents consented to sexual relationship with Kelly. So they're saying that they're going to hold that rule as evidence that, you know, they didn't, they're saying that the parents did not know. USA motion number 10, motion to exclude discovery request or commentary regarding discovery in the presence of the jury. The government asks that the court preclude the parties from requesting discovery or otherwise commenting on discovery matters in the presence of the jury. Kelly does not intend to have discovery disputes in front of the jury. The motion is denied as moot. So it's just going to sit there until it starts to till the trial starts usa motion 11 motion to exclude evidence of arguments regarding the constitutionality of the statutes criminalizing the production and receipt of child pornography 
Government alleges that arguments which pertain to the constitutionality of statutes criminalizing child pornography offenses are wholly irrelevant to the indictment in this case. Kelly has no objection to that, so the motion is granted. USA Motion 12, motion to preclude argument or evidence of non-pertinent traits of defendant's character. The government moves to exclude defendants from presenting evidence of their lawfulness except by reputation or opinion evidence. Defendant's response. Brown argues that he may present testimony of his character of being a law-abiding citizen through specific instances of conduct. Kelly intends to abide by the rules of evidence and does not intend to affirmatively introduce evidence of good character. So he can't even say anything good about Brown or um, about the situation. I don't even know if he could include himself. Um, ruling, the motion is granted. Defendants may introduce evidence of being law-abiding, but only through reputation or opinion testimony, not through specific instances of conduct in line with Rule 405. Okay. So he's saying that someone can come in to talk about the character witnesses. Motion to preclude number 13, defense of alibi or unavailability and mental defect. The government moves to exclude any evidence or argument relating to alibi or mental defect because defendant did not provide the adequate notice prior to trial. Not that he does not have a mental defect or an opportunity to you know, use his dyslexia, they're saying that he did not motion it early enough to be able to use it into trial. Defendant's response, Kelly argues that he cannot provide an alibi at this time due to the inducement allegations that the offenses span 20 plus years. The ruling, motion is granted according to rules 12.1 and 12.2 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure. The defendant must provide advance written notice of any potential alibi or insanity defense. USA motion number 14, motion to preclude defense counsel from defend, defining the term reasonable doubt. The government argues that in its improper, that it is improper for attorneys to define the term reasonable doubt. Defendant's response, none. The motion is granted. Mm. USA Motion 15, motion to allow government to recall the case agent during its case in chief. The government asks permission to recall the case agent during trial. The government proposes that every direct examination of the case agent, the defendants can cross-examine in the case agent. Kelly argues that the court should use its discretion and not allow the government to recall the case agent too many times and that motion is granted. However, the court may use its discretion to prevent the government from needlessly recalling the case agent. U.S. Motion 16, motion to admit, admit business records pursuant to Federal Rule 803 and 901. No, or, excuse me. Okay, let me go over it again. USA Motion number 16, motion to admit business records pursuant to federal rule evidence 8036 and 90211. The government asked that the court admit the evidence listed in government exhibit one under the business record exemption. Now Kelly in his defense does not object, but asks for reciprocity if he seeks to introduce similar evidence. So he wants to be able to balance it. If they're gonna bring their receipts, he wants to bring his receipts. The motion is granted. Santiago Proffer, the government asks that the court admit specific categories of statements made by the conspirators in furtherance of the alleged conspiracy into evidence pursuant to Rule 801D2E. The motion provides an overview of the evidence that the government expect to be introduced demonstrating the existence of a conspiracy. Now the defendants respond. Uh, so Brown and Kelly allege that the Santiago proffer is insufficient because it does not identify which exact statements it wishes to introduce into evidence. Brown alleges that the lack of specific forecloses him from 
drafting necessary limiting instruction. The motion is granted if defendants believe that the government has not actually proved the existence of a conspiracy during trial, they may make a motion to strike or raise an appropriate objection. So Lion Weber is actually, I feel he's going by the book. He's not just going on a motion. Brown motion number one, motion to permit Mr. Brown to admit evidence of his own character. Defendant Brown argues that he should be allowed to present evidence that he is a law-abiding person. The government's response, the government admits that Brown may offer evidence of his reputation for being a law-abiding citizen, providing it comes in the form of opinion testimony. So the ruling, the motion is granted in part. Defendant Brown may only introduce testimony of his character in the form of reputation or opinion evidence. Should he do so, the government may refute the testimony on cross-examination using specific instances of conduct. Brown motion number two, motion to preclude the government from eliciting testimony regarding certain other crimes, wrongs, and acts by Mr. Brown. The motion is broken down into seven, several parts as seen below. Brown motion 2A, motion to exclude testimony regarding Mr. Brown making travel arrangements for minors four and six. Brown specifically seeks exclusion of grand jury testimony from minors four and six detailing how Brown booked their hotel rooms as they were minors. The government's response, the government argues that Brown's travel arrangements constitutes direct evidence of the offenses. Ruling, the motion is denied in part. The government may discuss Brown's travel arrangements as direct evidence that Kelly enticed minors into sexual activity. However, the government may not argue that because Brown made travel arrangements for specific minors, it was more likely that he knew different minors were depicted in certain videos. Brown motion two, number two B. Motion to exclude testimony from individuals B and D regarding Brown's role in arranging abortions for Kelly's partners. Brown specifically seeks exclusion of testimony from individual D stating that Brown took her to an abortion appointment and posed as her uncle and testimony from individual B that Brown arranged abortions for minors on Kelly's behalf. The government's response, the government states that it does not intend to introduce any evidence on this topic in this case in chief. So that is denied. So yeah, that's too much overreaching hearsay. And I get that. Brown motion to C, motion to exclude testimony from individual B regarding Brown's role in inviting Kelly concert attendance backstage. Brown specifically seeks exclusion of testimony from individual B, suggesting that Kelly would instruct Brown to invite girls aged 16 to 20 backstage. Government's response. The government does not anticipate that individual B will testify that Brown helped, helped Kelly invite girls backstage. So the motion is denied as moot. Brown motion number three, motion to exclude the government expert testimony from unqualified witnesses. Brown argues that any testimony about child pornography generally and typically offender behavior must come from a qualified expert witness. The government does not intend to introduce such evidence, so the moot is denied. So that expert uh, doctor in the child pornography situation, Dr. Turner, not even there, it's denied and moot. Brown motion number four, motion to preclude government witnesses from memories or statements from interviewed witnesses for non-testifying individuals. Brown moves to exclude any statements from non-testifying individuals that violate his protections under the confrontation clause. Government's response, the government states that it will not introduce testimonial evidence from non-testifying individuals. The motion is denied as moot. Motion to preclude motion number five, docket number 213, the government from making golden rule 
arguments to the jury and the defendants. Brown argues that it would be improper for the government to ask the jury to put themselves in Brown's shoes. Government's response. The government does not intend to make this type of argument to the jury. So the motion is denied as moot. So basically, the prosecution is really going to, yeah, they're going to have to, they're going to have to follow all these rules. Kelly motion number one, motion to exclude certain other bad act evidence. The motion is broken down in several subparts. Kelly motion one, motion to exclude evidence related to Kelly's marriage and alleged sexual relationship with Aaliyah. Defendant argues that he is not charged with any conduct stemming from this relationship, thus it is inadmissible. Government's response states that it does not intend to introduce any evidence on this topic in the case in chief, so the ruling is denied as moot. Kelly, motion 1B, docket number 221, motion to exclude uncharged allegations of women who claim that defendant abused or mistreated them. Defendants argue that any uncharged allegations should be barred. Defendant asks that the government immediately disclose any such evidence if it is intends to present it at trial. Government's response, so that means tell us, tell us what you're going to use so we can be ready and prepared. The government state that it does not intend to call anyone not identified in the indictment to testify about Kelly's abuse. The government states that some of the minors who will testify may state that others were present during Kelly's abuse, which would be direct evidence of the allegations in the indictment. So the motion is denied at moot. Kelly motion 1C, motion to exclude evidence that Kelly impregnated any accusers and or facilitated their abortions. Kelly argues this is information serves no legitimate evidentiary purpose. Government's response, the government states that it does not intend to introduce any evidence on this topic in its case in chief. The motion is denied as moot. Kelly motion 1D, Motion to exclude evidence that Kelly infected any sexual partner with herpes. Kelly argues this information serves no legitimate evidentiary purpose. Government's response, the government states that it does not intend to introduce the evidence on this topic. In this case, in chief, the motion is denied as moot. Kelly motion 1E, motion to exclude evidence that Kelly was previously sued by accusers and their settled lawsuits brought by their accusers. Defendant argues that such evidence should be barred to the extent it only goes to his bad character. Government's response argues that such evidence will not solely go to Kelly's bad character, but rather as direct evidence of some of the allegations in the indictment and the motion is denied. Motion to exclude video recordings of sexual acts that do not involve the charged conduct. Kelly argues that other video recordings should be barred. Government's response. The government states that it does not intend to introduce any evidence on this topic, in this case in chief, so the motion is denied as moot. And see, <clears throat> this is where, when they deny, it means that prosecution does not have enough evidence to con convict. So they're not even going to put it on the table. Kelly motion 1G. Motion to exclude Kelly's prior conviction. Kelly asked that the government be precluded from introducing evidence of prior convictions, including his convictions in, in the federal trial of New York. The government argues that limited testimony about Kelly's prior convictions should be allowed if he testifies specifically Kelly's racketeering conviction. So that's why they had to go on with the sentencing. And now we know why the federal uh, a Brooklyn trial had to be by itself there. I, I don't know if they're trying to make this consecutive or if they're going to blend them together and have him run his sentencing concurrent. Um, but we'll see how that works. The motion is denied as to Kelly's recent racketeering conviction. Okay. So they're not going to use that against him in this case here from what I the motion is denied as to Kelly's recent racketeering conviction. Kelly asked that the government be precluded from or excused 
um, from introducing evidence of prior convictions, including his conviction in Indy. Okay. And this is Harry D. Line Weber, Judge, United States District Court, and it was submitted 8 3 2022. I'm not really going to put my spin on anything because I really don't know. I, that's why I could only read the docket. I could only read it because we have no idea what's going to be presented in court. And for me to say, well, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and da, 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 da. To foresee this means that someone needed to have been there through R. Kelly's whole entire situation with Daryl McDavid or Daryl, um, um, with, with, Brown, June Brown. So I cannot say that. And I won't put that into this format. I want to just set the record out that these are the things that they're going to allow in the Chicago trial and what they're going to deny and not use. So they're setting the precedence that this is the rule of the tennis match, meaning you have to wear you know, your garb and you got to get ready to set the rules on how, you know, Venus and Serena are going to, to play the tennis match. That's what this is, defense and prosecution. They're on a court, they're on a court and, and they're, they're, they're playing for life. They're playing for life. So it is very vital that Bonjean and R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly, put their ducks in a row. That's why they're asking them, what are you going to accept? What are you going to deny? What are you going to allow? What are you not going to allow? Because when they go to trial, they want to be prepared. And I do believe that if Bonjean does not go to trial with him, Greenberg will be there. They may have another um, attorney as well. And it's so sad because I was reading something from Celebrating R. Kelly and I ran into a document that said that they, is, they have actually taken $28,000 from R. Kelly for restitution for the federal uh, Brooklyn trial. And I, I again thought that restitution um, for a normal person would take place after incarceration. Um, but when you have money of excess on your books, they're able to take it. They left him with $500, I believe. Um, so we just have to figure out what's gonna, well, even if, even if we put money on his books and it goes towards his restitution, that's just money he does not have to pay. And there's no more penalty for having that amount of money you know, to have to pay in when it's all said and done. Um, so I'm going to still continue to put money on his books. I'm going to talk to daddy Lolo, see what he has to say about that. But yeah, think about this, meditate on it and review it to the point where you're just observant of what the Chicago trial is going to look like. That's why I brought this information out for you. I thank you so much for liking, commenting to this podcast. And um, I just want to let you know that one needs to send a positive trail of blessings to Robert Sylvester Kelly right now. The lion's gate is open. And so if we believe and if we know strong enough and we have that connection with our higher power. We will see things coming together and we will see things making sense out of nothing, out of thin air, you know? So yes, I wanted to just leave this with you. And um, this has been a pre-recording, and I thank you for being here. Um, and I will see you next time. As always, keep it 100. Keep it 100 at all times. And uh yeah, so thank you for your comments and peace and blessings, and we'll see you next time.